What's going on YouTube? Chris here from projectoption.com and in today's video we're going to talk about what causes implied volatility to change. Now implied volatility is a very daunting topic for new options traders as it sounds like a very complex topic. Now I am no stranger to this because I know the first time I saw implied volatility when I was learning options, I thought to myself, I will never understand what those words mean on a deep level. Now while the exact math behind calculating implied volatility may be complex, all we need to know as options traders is this. Implied volatility quantifies option prices and expresses those option prices as one number. So instead of looking at hundreds of a stock's option prices and wondering if they're cheap or expensive, implied volatility helps us out by representing that stock's option prices as a single number that we can look at to gain an understanding of the, that stock's option prices. But what do option prices themselves represent? Well, option prices are representative of the market's anticipation of a stock's volatility over some period of time in the future. So when trying to understand why implied volatility changes, we need to go one step backwards and think about what causes option prices to change as that will give us our answer. Perhaps the number one general cause of option price changes is a stock's historical volatility or how volatile the stock has been in recent history. To verify this statement, I plotted the relationship between one month historical volatility of the S&P 500 and the VIX index, which measures one month option prices on the S&P 500. Now on this chart, we're looking at the one month historical volatility of the S&P 500, which is on the bottom axis or the horizontal axis. And we're comparing that against the VIX index, which measures one month option prices on the S&P 500. And that is the vertical or Y axis. So just to give you an example of what each dot on this chart represents, the one I'm pointing at represents that on this particular day, the one month historical volatility was recorded at around 33%. And on that day, with that 33% historical volatility reading from the past month, the VIX index was at 57%. So when we look at this chart and we plot the historical volatility against the VIX index, we learn that there's a very clear relationship between historical volatility and implied volatility. When the S&P 500 had higher historical volatility readings, which is on the further right side of this chart, so were option prices on the S&P 500, which are measured by the VIX index. And when one month historical volatility was at lower levels, so were the S&P 500 option prices, which can be seen on the left hand side of this chart. So basically, what we're seeing here is that there's a very clear relationship between the historical volatility or how volatile the market has been in recent history and how expensive or cheap option prices are on that particular underlying. And in this case, we're looking at the S&P 500. So let's go even further and verify this by looking at option prices in recent history. First, we'll start by analyzing implied volatility slash option prices on SPY after a period of very low volatility. So I've pulled up a chart of SPY here and I've put a box around a period of low volatility, which basically means that the market is grinding higher and there are no significant downside movements. So the end of that period is November 1st, 2017. And on that day, the SPY closing price was $257.49 and there was an expiration with 30 days to go. So I looked at the 257.50 straddle price, which was $4.59 at the time. And if we take $4.59 and divide it into 257.49, which is SPY's closing price, we learn that that straddle was trading for 1.78% of the SPY price. Now on that day, the VIX index, which measures 30 day option prices on the S&P 500 was at 10.2%. So the two things we want to pay attention to here are the straddle price as a percentage of the stock price, which in this case is 1.78%, and the VIX index reading, which is 10.2%. So let's go ahead and look at the same exact metrics except during a very volatile market period, which coincidentally is as I'm recording this video. The software in the previous slide was the Tastyworks trading platform. And if you want to learn more about Tastyworks to see if their commissions would be a good fit for you, or if you want to learn about how you can get one of our project option courses for free, go ahead and click on the link in the description below. Now, if you want to learn more about these courses, stick around to the end of the video as I'll be discussing each one in more depth. So as of this recording, the market has experienced significant volatility in recent months, which we can see by looking at the boxed area on this chart. So 
completely opposite of the previous area that we were looking at, we've seen a significant decrease in the overall market value, and during that period there has been a lot of chop. So here are the same option price statistics applied to the current market as of December 20th, 2018. So SPY has closed at $247.17, and the nearest expiration to 30 days was 29 days to expiration. Now, I looked at the 247 straddle price, which is the closest straddle to the current SPY price, and the 247 straddle expiring in 29 days is currently trading for $13.86, which comes out to 5.6% of the SPY price. And on this day, the VIX index, which is representing 30-day implied volatility on the S&P 500 index, is 28.5%. So we're about to do a side-by-side -side comparison of the two scenarios that we've just observed, but here we can clearly see that with the straddle price representing 17.8% of SPY's price, the VIX index is at 28.5%, which is significantly higher than the VIX index reading from the lower volatility example. If we perform a side-by-side -side comparison, we can clearly see that each market environment resulted in drastically different option prices as a percentage of the stock price, which generated very different implied volatility readings. Now I've actually added the one month historical volatility readings on each of these days that we just looked at. So in scenario number one, one month historical volatility was at 5% and the 30 day at the money straddle was trading for 1.78% of SPY's price and the VIX index on that day was 10.2%. Now in scenario number two, where there was extreme market volatility, the one month historical volatility reading when I captured this data was 22%, which is over four times more than scenario number one. Now in that higher volatility scenario, the 29 day straddle on SPY was trading for $13.86, which comes out to 5.6% of the SPY price, and that generated a 30-day implied volatility or VIX index reading of 28.5%. So if we work from top to bottom, in scenario number one, the one-month historical volatility was 5%, and that led to a at-the-money straddle price of 1.78% of SPY's price, which generated a VIX index reading of 10.2%. In scenario number two, we saw 22% historical volatility over the past month, and the 29-day straddle in that case was 17.8% of SPY's price, which is significantly more than it was in scenario one. And that led to a VIX index reading of 28.5%. So in short, lower historical volatility is going to result in cheaper option prices because there's no, there's no real reason for market participants to pay a lot of premium for option prices if the market is not moving around very much, and that leads to a lower VIX index. Now, in higher volatility scenarios, the market is moving around a lot more, and therefore traders are willing to pay a lot more for the options, and that leads to a higher VIX index reading. So to make a long story short, historical volatility, or what the stock or market has been experiencing in recent history, is perhaps the number one driver of option prices, or the VIX index slash implied volatility. Now, if there's one thing you take away from this presentation, it's that implied volatility does not control option prices. This is a common misconception that I see all the time and I experienced myself when I was learning about options. Option prices control implied volatility as implied volatility is a measurement of a stock's option prices. In other words, implied volatility doesn't exist without option prices and option prices don't exist without market participants who are trading those options. Now the last thing I'm going to mention for the sake of completeness is that it's possible to see implied volatility increase significantly without any changes in the option prices. This occurs when option prices do not experience their expected decay as time passes, which is very common leading up to an earnings announcement or anything that has the potential to result in a significant stock price movement in either direction. Implied volatility is a function of not only option prices, but how much time those options have until expiration. So a great example of this can be seen by looking at Apple's November 1st, 2018 earnings date and the days leading up to that earnings announcement. Now in this example, we're looking at the options that expire on November 2nd, which is the weekly expiration cycle immediately after Apple's November 1st earnings date. Now this is the expiration cycle that everyone will be trading to trade Apple's earnings. 
Now, seven days before those options expired, Apple was trading for $219.80, and the At The Money straddle was trading for $12.53, which represents 5.7% of the Apple stock price. Implied volatility with seven days to go in that earnings cycle was 50%. Now, if we fast forward to one day to expiration, which is immediately before Apple reported earnings, Apple was trading for $222.22, and the At The Money straddle price was now $11.40, which is 5.1% of Apple's stock price. So from seven days to expiration to one day to expiration, we can see that the At The Money straddle price only lost a little bit of value. And with $11.40 in that straddle with one day to go until expiration, that is implying that the market is expecting a large movement in either direction over the next trading day, which explains why that straddle price is what it is. Now, with $11.40 in the At The Money straddle with one day to expiration, the implied volatility reading of that expiration cycle was 103%. In this special scenario, the drastic increase in implied volatility was not caused by any change in stock price volatility, but the fact that the options barely lost any value despite having expiration rapidly approaching. Now, typically, at-the-money options experience the largest amount of decay in the final weeks and days before they expire. In this last example, we saw the options keep almost all of their value even through the passing of the final days before expiration, and the result of that scenario was a significant increase in implied volatility even though the option prices actually decreased. In summary, implied volatility is tightly related to how volatile a stock has been recently. Exceptions to this rule would be when there are upcoming earnings announcements or other events that can cause large stock price changes. Now since implied volatility is calculated from option prices, implied volatility cannot control option price changes. Changes in option prices control changes in implied volatility. And basically from here on out, every time you think of implied volatility, I want you to think of option prices because that's exactly what implied volatility is. Now as I mentioned earlier, I said I would go into more detail on both of the courses that are offered on projectoption.com. Now these two courses are essentially research products as they include hundreds of hours of programmatic backtesting that I've done in the past and they focus on the two approaches that I firmly believe will work long term over a lot of different trades. Now I believe they will work long term based on the logic that they are built on and the trade management rules that are incorporated in the strategies to prevent large drawdowns. Now with that said, these are not get rich quick strategies by any means. You have to take risks when trading options, and in the courses, I was sure to lay out different trade sizes for more conservative traders and larger trade sizes for more aggressive traders so that you can have a realistic return expectation if you implement one of these strategies and follow the rules over time. So if you want to check out those courses, go ahead and click on the link in the description. Thanks so much for watching this video, everybody. Once again, I'm Chris from Project Option. If you want to check out some more of my options trading and investing videos, go ahead and click on the links on this slide right now. Also, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you can get all of our upcoming videos in the future.